dollars. I wanted to ride on the helicopter, but she didn't want to. She said, fifty dollars is too much. And I heard a, a old couple come up, and they were there. And the, and the guy says, I've been trying to ride this helicopter for years. My wife says, fifty dollars is fifty dollars. We can't afford it. He said, come on, hon. And, he, and the pilot, we were standing, the pilot heard him uh, say that about his wife. And he finally, he, he, he's seen him for years coming up there, standing by the helicopter, and him arguing with his wife. And she kept saying, fifty dollars is fifty dollars. And um, my wife, I was standing there listening to it, and she was, my wife was agreeing with it, saying, yeah, fifty dollars is fifty dollars. And finally, the pilot said, look here, man, to the guy, older guy, said, you've been coming out here all these years, I've seen you. He said, look, I'll tell you what, if you all can fly in this thing, and I'm going to do some maneuvers, if you don't say a word, he said, I'll, it won't cost you a dime. He looked at his wife, said, come on, honey, we can do it. She goes, all right, all right, okay, we'll do it. And she said, he said, promise you won't say nothing. She goes, I won't, he said, I won't say nothing. And even though I, it gets kind of hairy, it gets kind of crazy. And uh, they went up in the plane, and that pilot started doing all kinds of crazy things. We was there, and she fell out. She fell out and hit the ground. And when they landed, the, uh, the, uh, I mean, the helicopter, when they landed the helicopter, the pi pilot turned around and said, what do you think about, and he said, where's your wife? And he said, she fell out. He said, why didn't you say nothing? He said, $50 is $50. <laughs> you heard about that kid, right, Christmas time, bad kid, real bad kid. And this real bad kid, he sat down and wrote, wrote Jesus. Uh, his mother said, if you want a, he wants a bike. He wanted to get a bike for Christmas. And she said, you write Jesus a letter, and, and you, uh, you tell him about you wanting a bike, and and you tell him how you've been all year. So he said, all right. So he goes up in his room, gets a pen out, and writes down. He said, dear Jesus, I've been a good boy this year, and I want a bicycle. He thought about it a little bit, and he took it, rolled up. He said, dear Jesus, I've been trying to be a good boy this year, and I'd like to have a bicycle. And he, man, he folded that up, threw it away, and he started thinking, he said, I got, I'm going to walk around and try to think. So he told his mom, I'll be right back. I'm going to walk down the street and think about this letter. He walks down and went past the Catholic Church. And he went up to the Catholic Church and went inside and saw this statue of Mary right inside the little thing. You know, they have the little statues like that. He looked around. He snatched that statue, took it home, and he stuck it under his bed and wrapped it up real good and tight. And he sat down, got a piece of paper out and his pencil, and he said, Dear Jesus, you ever want to see your mother again? Yeah, I want a bike for Christmas. Amen. Hallelujah. Been thinking about that all day. Um, take your Bibles, turn anywhere. It's all good. Amen. It's all good. Um, if I can find my message here. Uh, uh, go to, go to uh, First Chronicles. I, I, I told uh, Brother Bez, I said, most of the time I never know when I'm preaching until I get up here. And I hate it. I hate dealing that way. I, ha I hate it. I just... Uh, I like to know what I'm doing before I get there, you know, and I pray and I look at this I look at that and I pray about this and pray about that and I ask the Lord show, show me what he wants me to do and, and that's the way it's been I mean I, Sunday morning sometimes I walk in the pulpit I'll have I'll have two or three messages and I and then it'll be something completely different Or something to happen in the church service something to go on and I'll change everything and I mean it just changes and matter of fact I can't even find it right now and everything changes and uh, so I, but I hate it. I hate being like that. I hate that. Uh, some guys are all organized. I mean, Bez, he's all organized. He's got everything all together. And, uh, and uh, you know, I'm sure he's, uh, he was showing me how he organized everything. I thought, man, that's good. I, I need to do that. I need to be more organized. How many of y'all agree y'all need to be more organized? Amen. I want to be more organized. If I can find my message, my Lord. Oh, it's right there in front of me. I took it out of my Bible. All right, there it is. First, Chron uh, First Chronicles chapter 28. Uh, telling them jokes got me sidetracked. But um, First Chronicles chapter 28, and, uh, and look at, uh, we'll start at verse uh, uh, 1. But uh, Bez is all, he's all organized and everything. I'm not that way. I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of unorganized when it comes to, uh, I got papers everywhere. I got, man, books everywhere. I'm, I got stuff everywhere. I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to get better. I'm 61 years old. They say you can't teach old dog new tricks. And I'm trying to learn something new. And I'm always trying to learn. I'm always trying to gain knowledge. Uh, 
I like race cars. Uh, I, I, I just gave away a Camaro I had. Um, and all the boys in the church, I got up in front of our church and said, I, I had a red Camaro and had a 350 in it, four bolt main, you know, four speed, and uh, 1980. And it, this, the good year of Camaro is 69. That's the best year of any uh, basic, you know, a lot of the cars, 69 was the year. I had a 69 Shelby. I totaled it uh, when I was uh, six, 16 years old. I had a bunch of race cars. I was building motors and all that stuff. I had motors in my house, uh, in my, my mother's house, my father's house. I had motors in there. I had uh, wheels on the walls, and, and uh, I like that stuff. I, I like motorcycles. I like all, all that stuff, man. I, like, I would like to drive a Daytona 500. I, that'd be fun, man. And if they gave me a microphone like this, and I could drive the Daytona, Daytona 500 with 100,000 people out there, or 200,000, whatever it is, drive that thing and preach to them as I'm going around. And, that would be, and they couldn't catch me. That would be a blessing. And just preach to them. And have, I'd have a lot of fun. Uh, but I like race cars. I like messing with them. I like uh, doing all that stuff. I watch the races. I like fights. I like to watch the ultimate challenge. I like to see the guys get in, in a ring and beat each other's brains in. And it's such a blessing. It, it, it does, you know, that's, a, that's a kind of like the Christian life, man. You're in a fight. Yeah. And uh, I get inspired by that, really do. I get inspired by watching that stuff. And you say, well, it's violent. I know. And uh, uh, it is violent. And, uh, but I just, you know, that's the way I grew up. And uh, Dr. Rubin and I used to fight all the time. We, um, well, he was, was doing nunchucks when I was going to Bible school. Uh, when I first met him, he was trying to show me how to kill somebody in three seconds. And we was in Montgomery Wards. And he, was, he said, get on the ground, Brother Ryman. And I said, put me on the ground, old man. And uh, he said, don't call me old man. I said, put me on the ground, old man. Now I'm the old man. And, uh, he, and he was on the, we got on the floor in the Montgomery Wards, and he's trying to get me in this choke hole and trying to show me how to do it, you know. And we're wrestling around. We tore the whole place up, tore the whole island up. And, uh, and, uh, and, a, and a guy, a salesman, walks up and says, uh, can I help you? And we're on the ground. He's trying to get me in this hole. And I'm laughing because he can't get me in this hole. And, uh, and he, he, sta- he goes, uh, uh, yeah, how much is those bullets up there? Uh, how much are those bullets? And um, so we both get up off the floor, and the guy goes, what were you all doing down there? And he says, uh, I'm, a, I'm, his, I'm a teacher, and he's my student. He said, what do you teach? And he goes, uh, how much, give me them bullets right up there. Give me them, he's trying to change the subject. Them 22s, give me them 22s up there. And, uh, and the guy says, what do you teach? And I said, he teaches Bible. <laughs> and he said, you teach Bible, and you're on the floor trying to show me in three seconds or less? And he was a drill sergeant in World War II. That's why. He was trying to show me. And, uh, but I had a lot of fun with him. Him and I used to do nunchucks together and all that stuff. And uh, I dressed up one night. I'm, I'm just killing time right now. I, I dressed up one night, and uh, I told him, I said, old man, I'll get you any time. You better be ready any time. I'll be out there to get you. He said, bring it on, boy. So one night I dressed in all black. I had a mask on. I had gloves on. I stood out. I had a big, long staff in my hand. I stood out behind a tree. It was a November night. The wind was blowing. He'd just come out of church history. He had all his books and everything. He had test papers. And he come out, and right as he walked by me, I stood still and didn't move. And I, when he walked by me, I came down on his head with the staff. I didn't hit him. I just came down on his head and, and yelled. He dropped everything in his hands. Wind was carrying stuff off. And he, he, he screamed, ah, like that. And I, said, I told him, I said, got gotcha, you, boy. Got gotcha. you. And he said, yeah, man. He's grabbed his heart. He said, how about picking up the papers for me? How about doing that? But we'd, we'd play around and do all that stuff. And, uh, but here tonight, I'm going to preach on 1 Chronicles chapter 28. And uh, I'm going to preach on some things that, uh, you know, in the Bible, God likes some things. And in the Bible, God hates some things. And if you read your Bible at all, you, you, find, out God, you find out what God hates and what he likes and what he loves. And... Uh, and when, when you read over in Proverbs, you read Proverbs chapter, I think it's 6, and Proverbs 6, I'll read it to you, you don't have to turn there. And Proverbs 6, it tells you what God hates. And when you find out what God hates, you need to note, note that in your Bible. And you say, does God hate things? Yes, he does. It says, these six things do the Lord hate. Yea, seven are abomination on him. This is uh, Proverbs six sixteen. He says, a proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devised wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. My son, keep thy father's commandments, and forsake not the law of thy mother. So the Bible says there are six things, yea, seven are abomination to him, 
It says God hates some things. Then if you read in your New Testament, you'll find the Bible says, uh, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. And I, you know, I have Calvinists try to tell me, oh, see, God predestinate all this. You know, they try to use this, that verse and, and, uh, and, and try, to, try to prove that God's unjust. And God is not unjust. The Bible says, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. And this is after the fact, hundreds of years after they're dead, God says, Esau have I loved, and Je- uh, 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 Esau have I hated, and Jacob have I loved. And this is hundreds of years after the fact. God said, why does God hate it? Because of the choices he made, the things he did. And he chose to go against God. And in First Chronicles chapter 28, you have David come along, and David was a man after God's own heart, and David loved God. And David was called, the, we went through that Sunday, David was called the uh, psalmist of Israel. He sang praises to God. So when you read the book of Psalms, you're reading about singing, about uh, uh, David singing to God out there on the backside of the desert. And they wrote it, and whenever Saul had an evil spirit on him, uh, they, they found a guy named David that came in, played his harp, and ran the evil spirit away from Saul. And David was a man that loved God. And, I mean, but he was a warrior. The guy was a warrior. And, and back in the Old Testament, the f- battle was a physical battle. In the New Testament, where we're at, the battle is a spiritual battle. We're in a, I, think, I think the battle, the spiritual battle is a lot harder than the physical battle. But, I mean, but if you're looking eyeball to eyeball with somebody with a sword and you're fighting, you know, and, and they're talking about bringing in the kingdom and all that, if you're fighting somebody with a sword, that's pretty tough. But here in the New Testament, you can't see your enemy. You can't see him. He's there. Your enemy is around, and he, you can't see him. It's a spiritual battle. And David was a man that went into physical battle, and, man, and God was with him. Wherever he went, um, they started, when David came back from battle as a young man, uh, they, sang, they sang songs, you know, David has, uh, Saul has killed his thousands, David has killed his ten thousands, and they were singing those songs. But David comes along at the end of his life, and near the end of his life, and he's, he's bringing in the Ark of the Covenant, and he's uh, rejoicing before the Lord, and First Chronicles 28, and David, David assembled all the princes of Israel, and the princes of the tribes, and the captains, and the companies that ministered to the king by course, and the captains over thousands, captains over hundreds, and of the stewards over all the substance and the pro, uh, provisions of the king, and of his sons and officers with the mighty men, and with all the valiant men on, the, on the Jerusalem. And David the king stood up, upon his feet and said, Hear me, my brethren, and my people. As for me, I had in my heart to build a house for, uh, of the rest for the ark of the uh, covenant of the Lord and for the footstool of our God and had made ready for the building. But God said unto me, Thou shalt not build a house for my name because thou hast been a man of war and shed, has shed blood. Howbeit the Lord God of Israel chose me before the house of thy fa- my father to be king over Israel forever. For he had, and you've noticed that, he said forever. One day, the, the, the um, uh, kingdom of, of, in the millennium, David's going to be reigning as well in the, in the millennium. And uh, it says, and my father to be king over Israel forever. For he hath chosen Judah to be a ruler, and of the house of Judah, and of the house of my father, among the sons of, of my father, he liked me to make me king over all Israel. And of all my sons, for he hath given me many sons, he hath chosen Solomon, my son, to sit upon the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. And he said unto me, Solomon thy son, he shall build my house and my courts, and I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. Moreover, I will establish his kingdom forever, if he be constant to do my commandments and my judgments as I, this day. Now therefore, in the sight of all Israel, the, uh, the congregation of the Lord, and in the audience of our God, keep and seek all the commandments of the Lord your God, and that ye may possess this good land, and leave it for an inheritance unto your children after you forever. And thou, Solomon, he turns to Solomon, thou, Solomon, my son, know thou that God of thy father served him, uh, serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind, for the Lord searches all hearts and understandeth all imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. If thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. Uh, take heed now, for the Lord hath chosen thee to build a house for the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. Let's go, Lord, and pray. Father, 
I pray, God, give me clarity of thought now. God, I pray, Father, move now. Father, have your will and way. May the Holy Spirit of God uh, walk up and down these aisles and these pews and each heart. And my Father, help us to glorify you. And you said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men on myself. Help me lift you up now. And we'll thank you and praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I want to look back at verse uh, 4. It says, how be it the Lord God of Israel chose me before all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. For he hath chosen Judah be, to be ruler and of the house of Judah, uh, the house of my father among the sons of my father, he liked me and made me king over Israel. Y'all know the story over in the book of Samuel when God says, I'm not going to have Saul as king anymore. I'm going to raise me up another king. I'm going to make uh, him because a man after my own heart. And God sent Samuel down and he sent Samuel down to uh, uh, David's house, to the house of Jesse. And, and, and you know, all the, all the sons of Jesse passed before uh, uh, Samuel. And Samuel said, no, that's not him. God said, that ain't him, that ain't him. Even though they had size, they, had, uh, they were big guys, they were strong men. And, uh, and he said, don't you have any more boys? And he said, I got one. He's out there in the backside of the desert. I didn't think it was important to bring him in. And usually the things that, you know, the Bible says God has chosen the foolish things in the world confound the wise. Usually the things that you think they're, they're no, nothing, uh, that God, that's the things that God usually likes and, and he'll use. And David was back there on the backside of the desert singing praises to God. And God was just, uh, just, uh, um, just amused and, and entertained with David back there singing and praising him. And then when a lion came and a, and a bear came, uh, David took him on and God gave him, uh, gave him the power. Now, I want to preach tonight for a few minutes, Lord willing, a few minutes. Uh, last night, I can't believe I went an hour and a half. I can't believe it. Uh, Brother Bez told me I went an hour and a half. I, I was kidding myself I was going to go two hours. T last night, when I was pulling away, I said, tonight I'll go three. But I was just joking. But uh, Lord willing, I'll just be a few minutes. I won't be too long. But um, uh, anyway, uh, David's, the Bible says David's talking here, and he said, God liked me. God liked me. And I started thinking about God liking somebody. You know, the Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, God showed his love to the world already. He's proved his love, and God's proved his love to us when we accept him as a, he, Jesus Christ was God's love uh, incarnate. He was God's love incarnate. He proved his love for us and for the world. And if the world would come to him, and there's a, there's a teaching now saying that God, Jesus only shed enough blood just for the very elect. That ain't true. The Bible says God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God doesn't want nobody dying and go to hell. If a man dies and goes to hell, he's going to be an intruder in a place where the Bible says in Matthew chapter 25, uh, verse 41, I believe it is, is hell was, hell was created for the devil and his angels. And that was his kingdom. And if a man goes to hell... And if you go to hell, is, is you're going to be you stepping over the love of God and the grace of God and the mercy of God. You're going to have to step over that and spit on it like the soldiers did in Jesus' face. You're going to have to spit on them, him and on his love and to go to hell. And he's already proved I People always say, oh, the, why, why does God send people to hell? I said, God doesn't send nobody to hell. Man chooses where he's going to go. You choose where you're going to go now. You, right now, where you're sitting, right, and, and wherever, whoever it is, they choose whether they want to go to heaven or hell. What about the people that never heard? I tell people this. I said, hey, that's not an excuse either. Because the Bible tells us in Romans 1, it says, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. As God. Neither were they thankful. I mean, when Noah got off the ark, when Noah, all three of his sons, they all three knew who God was. Their daughters or their uh, wives knew who God was. Somebody dropped the ball. What happened in America? People dropped the ball. They've dropped the ball. They didn't go out and, like brother was talking about, the, the New Age stuff and all that stuff coming in. Old-time preaching used to be on, uh, in America was on fire. Pam. You, you preach the Word of God, and people get saved. My, my great, great, great uncle got saved under a guy named Sam Jones. That's where they, down in Tennessee, uh, Thomas Ryman, they, they built, they built the, Thomas, uh, the Ryman Auditorium where the Grand Ole Opry was. I found out that was my great, great uncle. All Rymans are related. And I'll tell you what, dropped the ball. My family wasn't saved. We didn't know nothing about being saved. And man, but, but somebody came by and told us about Jesus Christ. It was our decision whether we were going to get saved or not. It was our decision whether we were going to trust Jesus or not. And David, David made a decision that he was going to love God and he was going to honor God. He was going to put God first. And he said, he gets up in front of the crowd of all Israel with Solomon there and everybody. He said, God liked me. Amen. Now I'm going to tell you something. Uh, God doesn't like everybody. 
He loves everybody. And you know what that shows me? That I, you know, I love everybody too. I don't want nobody to die and go to hell. I, I love everybody. I want to see everybody saved, but I don't like everybody. See, God, give me a loophole. I don't have to like everybody. And if there's a lot of people, man, I don't like. I don't like to be around them. I don't like to talk to them. I, I love them. I want to see them saved. I want to see them do right, but I don't like the way they live. I don't like the way they act. I don't like the way they treat our God. I don't like the way they treat the church. I don't like the way they, they treat the Bible. I don't like that. And God, and God doesn't like it either. And I'll tell you what, when it comes to choosing up sides, you better choose God's side every time. <laughs> Most people will choose the wrong side. Why is it people always end up choosing the wrong side? They get on the wrong side of every argument. They get on the wrong side of, of, of situations. Uh, wrong, I, I tell you, when it came down to my family, uh, Jesus said, if a man's not willing to uh, forsake father, mother, sister, and brother, and all that, and be my disciple, he, I mean, follow me, he said, he cannot be my disciple. I had to, I turned to my, I, I said, mom, dad, family, I love you, but I tell you what, when it comes to Jesus Christ, I'm, I love him more than I love you, and I'm going to serve him. My family ended up getting saved as a result of that. My mom, her, her mom got saved, her dad got saved, all the family got saved as a result of us making a decision and sticking to it and staying with it. And the Bible says, David says, God liked me. And I'm going to tell you some things why God liked David. David was a man after God's own heart because David was content with who he was. He wasn't trying to put on the doll. He wasn't trying to be somebody else. Everybody in this world seems like they're, they think they're in the movies. They think they're, they, they picture themselves as a, a, a Justin Bieber or, or, or Lady Gaga or some crazy thing, a movie or some, uh, um, some movie star or some uh, singer. Everybody imagines themselves as somebody else. They're always trying to be somebody else. That's why Facebook is so uh, famous, man. Everybody thinks, I can be a movie star. I can be somebody on Facebook. I can see how many people like that. Hey, please like me. Please like me. And they, people put the like on there. Oh, I love that and all that. People think they're movie stars. They want to be somebody else. They don't want to be themselves. They're not content with who they are. David was content with who he was. He was a man after God's own heart. He didn't care what they thought. When he went, man, when, when he went up before his brothers and he went out to the fight of Goliath and his brother said, we know your pride. We know you are. And David said, no, I ain't no pride. I just love the Lord. That, that somebody ought to go down and take the head off this uncircumcised Philistine. He said, this guy has no right to stand up here and yell at our God and call us names and say our God is no good. It ain't, no, it ain't right. Somebody ought to do something about it. He said, I'll do something about it. If ain't nobody else got any guts to do it, I'll go do something about it. And David got fired up, man. But he was content with who he was. He, when Saul said, come here, David. He said, uh, who is this kid? And he said, try on my armor. And David said, I haven't proved this. He said, I'm not going to try to be in your place. I'm going to do what God's given me to do. And David was out there practicing with a sling and had five. And, and you, know, he, you know the story. He went down to the brook, picked up five smooth stones, and he smacked that giant right in, in the head. And that giant, you know what? That giant didn't have, if you notice, uh, you notice uh, in history, that that giant didn't have no nose guard. And, they, and that's why they started putting a nose guard from the word of God. David hit that sucker right between the eyes, right there, right in the nose, and that knocked him, and he didn't go backwards, he fell flat on his face. That means when that rock hit him right there in the head, God smacked him in the back of the head, and that sucker fell right on his face. God smacked that dude. He said, I, you, I don't believe God smacked him. I believe of all my heart God smacked him when David smacked him. And, but David was content with who he was. He wasn't trying to put on the doll. He wasn't trying to pretend. And God doesn't like pretenders. You know, these have the song back in the 50s, you know, pretenders, uh, uh, all these pretenders. Everybody's trying to be somebody else. I don't, I'm just me. I, I, got around, I got around some old-time preachers. I went down to Bible school in Greenville, South Carolina. I was telling the guys, I said, I got around. I went up to Jack Howes and went to uh, Howes Anderson. They wouldn't take me. I didn't have a high school education. I only had eighth grade education. I couldn't read. I went over to the college, and I went in there. But I, I, I loved Jack Howes. I loved him. And I, I, he helped me. A lot of the message he preached helped me. And I, I've told my brother here a little bit ago, I listened to a message Jack Howes preached. I, my wife said, you listen to that thing over and over. It's on duty. And on duty, I listen to that thing, and I say, yeah! I'd be riding down the road, she'd be sleeping in the car, and I'd go, yeah! And she'd wake up, and she'd say, woo! What's the matter? i get excited about it. I just, and, you know, I got around Dr. Seiler. I wanted to be like him. I wanted to be like all these other preachers. But finally, the Lord said, just be yourself. Don't try to be somebody else. I, I watched the preachers. I said, man, they got wingtip shoes. They must get their power from the wingtip shoes. So I went out and got me a, I prayed for wingtip shoes, man. I got me a pair of wingtip shoes. I said, man, the power must come from the wingtip shoes. Oh, man, I, I mean, I was trying to, I analyzed the preachers and all that. I mean, I wanted to be just, I wanted to have power in my life. And I was trying to be somebody else. And God said, just be yourself. 
You know what God wants you to be? He wants you to be yourself. You know why God liked David? Because David was content with who he was. He wasn't trying to be somebody else. And man, thank God he wasn't trying to be nobody else. I mean, David was, he's called the psalmist of Israel. And he sang praises to God. And he had a beautiful voice. And what a thing, I would love to hear him sing. Uh, he's out on the backside of that desert singing praises to God. And I, we went through that Sunday. I mean, you read the book of Psalms, you read, you know, Lester Roloff would teach the girls down in, in uh, Corpus Christi. He would teach the girls how to sing the Psalms. And you would sing those things. Uh, I, I, I started doing, learning, I, I would listen to Lester Roloff sing, and I would try to go in my book, uh, in my Bible, and the book of Psalms, and sing along with him. Here's one right here. Uh, I'll read it, I'll sing it to you. In Psalm chapter 19, I believe it is. And it goes like this, if I can get to it real quick. In Psalms 19, it says, um, Oh, wow, that's not it. Oh, here we go. Uh, It goes, uh, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimonies of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. More to be desired are they than gold, yet in much fine gold. Sweeter also than the honey, and the honeycomb. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than the honey and the honeycomb. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord is true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. David sang those songs. He wasn't stupid. And he got God's attention. God leaned over the banister of heaven. He said, oh, you believe that? God said, angels, quiet. Listen. And when you sing to God, it means a lot. Why? The angels are there singing, praising him. But when a human being that has a free will makes a choice, I'm going to worship him. When the devil's right there saying, God, curse God and die. And you make that choice. David made that choice. God liked David because David was content with who he was. He wasn't trying to be somebody else. He sang God's praises. God was pleased with David. God was so pleased with him. You know, the Bible says this. If you, you know, you can please God. The Bible says we can please God. The Bible says this. It says, without faith, it's impossible to please him. You know, what you, you know how you can please God? It's by getting more faith. So how do you do that? Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Amen. You can get more faith by hearing the word of God, by reading the word of God, by hiding the word of God in your heart. Amen. You want to please God? It says, without faith, it's impossible David was content with who he was. David, and God was pleased with David. May I tell you what? I want the Lord to be pleased with me. I I often thought about, did Jesus ever laugh? I like laughing. You know, the Bible says the joy of the Lord. Joy comes from within. Laughter comes from happenings, things that go on. Joy is in the heart, is down here. And David had joy in him and happiness. And, he, I, and, I thought, and I thought about Jesus. Did Jesus ever laugh? I believe he did. The Bible says God's going to laugh at the calamity of the world. When the world gets together and tries to do all this stuff, they go, how are we going to stop them? And God's going to laugh at that. God's got a sense of humor. But Jesus, did he laugh? I believe the Bible doesn't record it. It says he groaned in his spirit. It says, I, I, I believe the Lord's a practical joker. You say, oh, come on, that's irreverent. No, I believe the Lord's a practical joker. I think he pulls pranks. 
<laughs> so, oh, I don't believe that. I can prove it. When he resurrected, when he was on the road to Emmaus, he walked down there and he, he, he stepped out. Two disciples walking by. He steps out and starts walking along with them. Hey, guys, what's going on? And they said, man, we're just talking about all this happened down in Jerusalem and everything. He said, what happened down there? Well, you, were you a stranger or something? Where you been? Oh, I've just been around. He said, man, you, you, didn't know, you didn't hear about Jesus of Nazareth? And you didn't hear about all that happened? And he, they're telling him. And he's walking along. No, I didn't know that. Wow. That's something else. And then the Bible says he came to a place with the two ways split, you know, where he, and he, he pretended that he was going to go this way. He pretended. And they said, no, come on, go with us, going home. It's kind of late. And he says, oh, no, I got to go. I really do. I got to go. Man, this is after his resurrection. And he said, no, I got to go. I got to go. And they said, oh, come on. Come on. And he said, okay, all right, I'll go with you. So then he goes to the house and sits down, and, he, and the Bible says they knew him when he lifted up, the, he lifted up and gave thanks. Amen. And he disappeared. I imagine when he disappeared, he probably went, ha, ha, ha. Man, those dudes jumped up, man, and took off. Say, God ain't a pra practical joker? Hmm, I don't know. I'm not trying to be irreverent. I'm just saying, I think the Lord pulls pranks. I tell you something, God liked David. David was content with who he was. God was pleased with David. And David was content with what God thought. I mean, man, he, you know, a lot of people got this idea. You ever see parents try to live their life through their kids? They'll try to make their kids be this or be that, and they'll try to do that and because they never made it, and they wanted their kids to make it. And we all like to brag on our kids. We like to brag on our grandkids. I'll tell you what, we, I, I got 15 grandkids, me and my wife. We, we always, you know, we get, uh, get together with other preachers, friends of mine and all that. We're always pulling out our wallets, and we're showing pictures, and we're showing them on our, on our phone. We're proud of our grandkids. You know, they can't do no wrong. You know, that's the way we look at it sometimes. But David was content with what God thought. And when God told him, he said, the Bible says, it's recorded in the word of God. David said, I'm going to build God a house. I'm going to build him a house. And, Dave, and Nathan, Nathan, uh, Nathan said, uh, David, do what's ever in your heart. Go ahead and do it. And he said, do it, man. And then all of a sudden, as he's going out, the prophet going out, God says, go back and tell him he's not building my house. He's not building it. His son's going to build it, but he's not building it. He goes back and he tells, he tells David, you, God said, you're not building the house. And David said, all right, if God said it, all right. But ain't nothing saying that I can't prepare for it. Ain't nothing saying that I can't get ready for it. And David prepared everything for the house, for his God. And David was content with what God thought. The Bible says, it recorded in the word of God. He says, look what he says. And uh, it says, verse 3, but God said unto me, thou shalt not build a house for my name. Because thou hast been a man of war and hast shed blood. God says, you're not going to do it, but your son can. And David said, okay, God, as long as, long as it's in the family, as long as you allow it in the family, what a blessing that is. And David was content with what God thought. God liked David. Does he like you? He's I'm his child. You know, you can have somebody you love. I've seen husbands and wives that love each other, but they don't like each other. I've seen people love their children, but not like them. I've been around people that, man, they, they love their parents, but they don't like them, and their parents don't like the kids, and they don't, I mean, just a thing. But David liked God, and God liked David. Ain't that something? Amen. They were both on the same page. Do you like God? Does he like you? She said, God loves me. Yeah, he does. But does he like you? Amen. Like your friends? Does he like the places you go? Because you say, well, everywhere I go, Jesus goes. Does he like the places you go? Does he like the shows that you look at? Does he like the music that you put in your ears? Does he like the dress that you wear? 
I was telling Bez, I said, we had this girl come to church, and she told me, she, I thought, a lot of times I take things for granted. And, I, and the girl said she was going on a mission field and a mission trip. So I had these missionaries there, and, uh, and, and I had these missionaries up in the front row. I said, I still look back, and I said, oh, she, she didn't go to our church. But she was around. She said, I'm going to, will you pray over me to go to the mission field when I go to mission? I said, oh, sure. She got, out of the, she got out of the pew in the back, and I went, oh, no. She had a dress all the way up to here, man. And as she walked down the aisle, every, I, heard, I told everybody, she's going to the mission field. And she walked down the aisle, and all the men were like, Checking her out, you know, look at that dress she's wearing, man. And I, she couldn't even, matter of fact, she couldn't even bend down and, without showing her backside. And I had these missionaries there, and these missionaries, they were looking at me like, she's going to mission field? <laughs> What's she going to mission field for? My Lord. And, and uh, I, was in, I was a little bit, I started laughing. I, whenever I, I, I find things funny that I probably shouldn't laugh at, and I find some things this is funny. It just cracks me up. And, uh, and, and, it, and when I looked at the missionary's face, I, when I looked at their face, they went like that. And, uh, and all the people were like, like, I just started laughing. I couldn't help it. And, uh, man, and finally I said, just pray over her. Go ahead and pray over her. And pray over her. Send her to her seat. Somebody get her a blanket and cover her up. Or something. <laughs> but does God like what you do? Does God like what you wear? I mean... My Lord, man, we got young people going out, and, you know, they come to church. They, wear, they know what they're supposed to wear at church, but when they go out in the world, they go, uh, uh, they go to proms, and they go to all that stuff, and they wear all kinds of sleazy-looking stuff. Man, my God, man, you're supposed to be a representative of Jesus Christ. You go out there, and you look sleazy, and you're, I, my wife and I used to dance. And when we got saved, I mean, we used to go to discos and all that stuff, and do the bump, you know, and do all that stuff, and we used to go and dance and all that crazy stuff. And when we got saved, God convicted us about that. And we, don't, we, don't, we didn't dance no more. And you said, well, David danced before the Lord. We'll get into that in a minute. But David danced before the Lord. And, but he wasn't, doing, he wasn't doing the boogaloo. He wasn't doing the bump. He wasn't doing the grind. He wasn't doing all that stuff. David wasn't, you know, the, the dancing today is like, is like uh, a man and a woman uh, doing things in the room where they shouldn't even be, you know, seen. And that's what the dancing is today. You see it all over Facebook. Everybody's doing all kinds of wicked dancing, showing sexual acts and all that stuff. They, that's the dancing today. They call that dancing. But all that is is filth. It's filth. And, and the, the girls, you know, shake your booty. That's what they're doing. The old movies, I mean, old 70s songs used to say that. And say, say all that junk. And that's what girls are doing. And when you go to a dance, my wife and I quit dancing. My, my, I'll never forget, we went to a dance one night. They said, why don't you all get up and dance? I said, no, we don't. And we left. We left the party. We, I, we realized we were in the wrong place. We shouldn't even be there. I'd just gotten saved. I'd just gotten, man, I'd been saved about a year, and God convicted me about that stuff. I, I quit going to the bars. I quit hanging out. See, people say, I just go to the bar. I drink water. I drink a Coke. And I, I mean, you should, the Bible says, uh, abstain from all appearance of evil. Get away from that stuff. Stay away from it. So I didn't, I quit it. I said, Lord, I, if, it don't, if it's not pleasing in your sight, if it's not pleasing, I'm going to stay away from it. I, 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 I was up for the first, first year after I was saved, I was like a roller coaster. I was like, Poo, up and down, up and down, up and down. I was on fire and then down. I was up and fire and, up and down. And I, and, and I thought, my, I'm tired of this kind of thing. I want to get steady. I want to be steady Eddie. I want to be on a, on a, uh, uh, a plane I'm growing and I'm getting closer to God. I don't want to be like the old times and the old world, the way I used to be. I don't want to be that way. David, David was liked by God because David was content with what God thought. David danced before the Lord. Like I said, it wasn't the, it wasn't the dances that you're talking about in this world today. When David danced before the Lord, I've done that. I've done that kind of dance. It's jumping and leaping and shouting. I've done that. It wasn't doing, you know, all kinds of other stuff. Old, old preacher used to say this. He said, he said, a dancing foot and a praying knee can't go on the same foot, on the same leg. And there's Christians going to dances. They have, I, I've seen churches that have dances. Bible-believing churches having dances. My Lord, man, that ain't, and they're playing music that's not glorifying God. You can't have that, you can't have it both ways. You can't have it that way. You're either going to be a Christian or you're not. That's the way it is. He said, well, I, you take all the fun. No, I've had more fun being saved and living right than I've had before I was saved. Amen. Drinking and carrying on. I have more fun. 
So Christian, you know what God loved? God liked David because David was content with what God thought. David had a courageous spirit. Boy, I tell you what, one thing the Lord likes, he likes it when somebody's courageous for him. David, David had a courageous spirit. You say, how do you know? When David went and fought Goliath, he was, nowhere in the Bible records that he was afraid. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He said, I'll take him down like I took the bear and the lion. He had no fear when it comes to standing before this giant, and he went up there and cut his head off. I mean, David was, had a courageous spirit. I can imagine the Lord up in heaven saying, hold it, everybody stop. Wait till you see what's going to happen here now. Say, so God watches that? I, yes. God says, wait till you see what this old boy's going to do here. My Lord, this guy's going to take somebody's head off. And David had a courageous spirit. He went out there, man, and he, and he said, in, you said, how do you know he had a courageous spirit? He went down to the brook, and he was looking at the giant, and he picked up one. He said, well, look, oh, he's got another giant back there, too. He has a brother back there. He has two. Yeah, there's three of them. Oh, I get three. Oh, there's two more just walked up. I got two more. And he put five smooth stones. Because the Goliath had four brothers. And David wasn't going to play around just with the one. He was going to take them all out. He wasn't messing around. And David picked up that smooth stone and he said, he said, I'm going to take your head off, boy. And that wasn't no boast, proud thing. He just knew that his God was able Amen. to deliver him. Amen. And give him power. And not only did he do that, he didn't go, I'm going to throw this stone at you, you bad boy. You, I don't like you. Stay away. Leave me alone. The Bible says he picked them stones up, put the other four, and he went, he went, started running right at him. Ran at him. And he threw that stone, and it hit that sucker in the head. And then God slapped him in the back. See, you know, the Bible says, draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. David, he, he threw the first rock, and God says, woo! Yeah! Smacked him in the back of the head. And then the brothers took off running. You know what? David ended up fighting one of his brothers later. And Abishai took his head off. I want to say David had a courageous spirit. And David had that such a courageous spirit that it influenced the men that followed him. You influence people that's going to follow you. And David had such a courageous spirit that the women started singing, Saul, Saul, has, Saul should have been the guy to fight. Because the Bible says he was a head taller than all of them. Saul was back there shaking in his boots. And David, a young boy, goes out there and takes his giant on. And all the men went, Woo! Look at that boy go! Yeah! Yeah! They all started shouting. And the Philistines, they lied. The giant said, if whoever wins, give me a man that we might fight. Whoever wins, we'll serve. Whoever uh, loses, will be the servants. Them suckers took off. They lied. They lied. They didn't, they weren't going to be, and they chased them. And all those men on, sitting on the side of his brothers even, the brothers of David, that God said, he, David said, God liked me better than them. His brothers went, Whoa! I'm going to tell you something, man. I get excited about fights. I get excited about, about things. I, get, I mean, I get excited. I do get excited. I get excited when somebody gets saved. I really get excited. I get excited, man, when we see revival. Boy, I get excited. And I'm going to tell you something. Uh, God, God gets excited. God likes it when you have a courageous spirit for him. I mean, you ought to try something out of the ordinary. You ought to go into McDonald's tomorrow. If you go to McDonald's, whatever the place you go, walk in there and say, I mean, you're going to be shaking in your boots. You say, oh, I, I won't. I ain't afraid of no man. I've heard men say, I ain't afraid of no man. Yeah, you are. Everybody's afraid of something. Go into McDonald's and stop, stop and say, after you get your food, make sure you get your food first before you get kicked out. Because <laughs> you might get kicked out. Go into McDonald's and say, after you get your food, turn around and say, ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention? I just want to tell you, I love Jesus. Just try it. I dare you. <laughs> I dare you. So have you done it? Oh, yeah, many times. Amen. Go, go somewhere. I walk in, I just start singing. My grandkids, they don't, they're not embarrassed with me. They can start singing with me. 
You know what happens? A courageous spirit. I'm not saying I'm like David. I'm saying I want to be like him. I'm saying when you have a courageous spirit, it rubs off. Amen. Say, I don't believe that. Look at, look at David's mighty man. Take your Bible, look in 2 Second, uh, Second Samuel. Look over here. I told you I wasn't going to preach long. I got to I gotta hurry. 2 Samuel. I love this. 2 Samuel. And... Oh, look at 2 Samuel chapter, um, uh, look at 23, 2 Samuel 23. I love this. I love preaching out of this chapter. This is one of my favorite chapters to preach on. Uh, when I first got saved, I preached out of this chapter, man, because I, I, my son, I have a son, my oldest son named Samson. And I tell you, I was, I was driving a trash truck, folks. I'm driving this, tra- I love, like I told you Sunday, I love trash truck. I was driving a trash truck, and, my, and Samson, my wife and I just got married, and she was pregnant, getting ready to have our, our first child. And God showed me in my heart that I was going to be a boy. And I, I heard Oliver Green preaching on the radio. And Oliver Green, I didn't, like I said, I didn't know no Bible, I couldn't read. But I heard Oliver Green preaching on Samson. In the first series, he was preaching on how Samson was a mighty man. And I heard that. I'm in the trash truck, and I pulled over. I could still see where it was at. It was in Riverdale, Maryland. I pulled over, and I'm listening to Oliver Green preaching. I'm going, yeah, 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 Samson, that's going to be our son. And then after a while, after I learned about what Samson did, I went, oh, God, what did I do to my son? Oh, my God. <laughs> what did I do to him? And, uh, but his name is Samson. Samson David. We named, that's how much I loved Samson and David. And uh, we named him Samson David. And I taught him to be courageous. Amen. I taught all my kids, my daughters, they're not afraid. I taught my daughters how to box. I taught them how to roof. I taught them all that stuff. I, I was telling them last night, my little girl, uh, Becky, Becky uh, was two years old. She had little guns on her, man. She was, she was something else. I had, I had ropes up in a tree about 20 feet, 30 feet high, and I would say, climb up that rope, honey. And she had diapers on. She'd go up that rope. I got it where I could I put another rope on the other, tr- other part of the tree, and I got it where I could swing her, and I got her going where, where I could swing her, and I taught her how to jump from one rope to another at two years old. And people would come over my house, and I'd say, hey, watch this. And I'd get my door, and they'd go, oh, oh my God. If the H-E, whatever it is, they would have taken my children away from me. But, uh, but I wanted them to be courageous. I wanted them not to be ashamed of Jesus Christ. I wanted them to be a, not afraid. My daughters all had bus routes. They went into bad neighborhoods, and, uh, and they would witness to people and see people get saved. I wanted them to be courageous, and God wants us to be courageous. And David rubbed off on his mighty men or his men. He rubbed off on them. Look what the Bible says these guys did. Just for fun, some of them. Look, and some of them, they didn't do it for fun. And now it says, verse 15 of, of chapter 23, And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me a drink of the water of well of Bethlehem, which is by me. And the third mighty man broke through the host of the Philistines and drew the water out of the, out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate, took it and brought it. Nevertheless, he would not drink thereof, but poured it out unto the Lord. You know what? David just walks out and says, Man, I'll tell you what, I, he was born in Bethlehem. He says, I would love to have a drink from that old well down there in the middle of town. But the Pharisees got it covered. They, I mean, there, there's thousands of men down there, a garrison down there, thousands of men there. And the three guys are sitting around. Three of those men, they said, Hey, let's do something crazy. I said, What? Abishai said, Let's go down there and to the well. Get him a drink. He's going to be impressed. And the Bible says that they went down into that garrison, they fought their way in, and they fought their way out just to get a cup of water for their king. Just to show them that they loved him and they appreciated him. I can see him now. I can see the garrison, uh, the uh, sergeant on, on hand saying, Sir, sir, we need reinforcements. We need reinforcements. The captain calls the colonel. Colonel, we need reinforcements. We're being slaughtered down here. And the colonel calls the general. general says, he says, sir, we need more reinforcements down here. We're being slaughtered down here. So how many are attacking? Three. You mean to tell me only three men came in there and wiped the thing and then got a drink of water and left? You gotta be kidding me! Three men did all the damage. And they came back and they said, "Here, David, 
He wanted a drink. And the Bible says David poured it out on the Lord, not disrespecting them, but he said, this has cost you a great deal. You think God, our Savior, will not respect what you do for him? And having a courageous spirit, look on down, look what the Bible says. It says, and uh, it says, in verse 17, and he said, be it far from me, O Lord, that I should do this. And then on down to verse 18, and the other side, the brother of Joab, the son of Zariah, was chief among the uh, three. He lifted up a spear against 300 and slew them and had a name among them. Was he not most honorable of the three? Therefore he was their captain, howbeit he attained not unto the first three. And Benaniah, the son of Jehoadiah, the son of a valiant man, it says, who had done many acts, he slew them. And he went down also and slew a lion in the midst of a pit in the time of snow. Now, brothers and sisters, this guy, Benaniah, he takes on two lion-like men, and then he says, hey, guys, he walks by and there's a lion in the pit. He said, what do y'all think? You think I can whip that lion? And they said, oh, come on, man. You know you mess with that lion? You know, a, a, good, a good lion, a good-sized lion, probably weighs anywhere between two and 400 pounds, maybe in Israel that, at that time. Two to 400 pounds. And if a lion was let loose in here tonight, if somebody walked in here and the lion roared and let loose, there wouldn't be enough doors for people to get out of. There'd be people going, going out the windows, going through the glass, everything else, trying to get away from that thing. But this guy just for the heck of it. He says, hey man, I'm going to go down and slay that lion. And they say, oh, come on. He jumps down in the pit in the middle of winter and takes on this lion and kills it. David inspired other men to have courageous spirit. And if you read on down, you read about these mighty men, the Bible says they lift up their spear. Uh, look at verse 21. It says he slew an Egyptian, a goodly man, an Egyptian had a spear in his hand, and they went down to him in a staff, and they said, plucked the spear out of his Egyptian's hand and slew him with his own spear. These three did Benaniah, the son of Jehodiah, had the name among the three mighty men. He was more honorable than the 30, but he attained not unto the first three. But David set him over his guard. And Ashiel, and so on, it tells you about all these men and the great acts that they had done. And if you read on, it'll tell you all the things they've done. David inspired those men to have a courageous spirit. You know what Jesus Christ did for us? He was courageous. He said, no man taking my life. He said, I lay it down and I have power to take it up again. He set an example for us to be a man, to be a follower, be a believer, and not to run. He said, he told his disciples, he, says, he told Peter, he said, put up your sword, Peter. He said, they live by the sword, shall die by the sword. He said, can I not call 10 leaders? 12 legions of angels. One angel killed 185,000 men in one night. Jesus Christ was born to die. What a courageous God we have. What a courageous Savior we have. But that, why God liked David? Because he had a courageous spirit. I mean, he did things, man, for the Lord, and he honored God, and his, the spirit that he had went out. Joab Joab was his cousin. Uh, Ashiel and uh, Abishai were their cousins. They were cousins. And uh, you know what the Bible says? It says Joab and, uh, and uh, Abishai was fighting the Am Ammonites and the Syrians. And here's what Joab said. You think, they were, he says, I'll tell you what, I'm going to take on the Syrians. Abishai, you take on the Ammonites. If they're too strong for you, I'll help you. And if, if, they're, if, if the Syrians are too strong for me, you come and help me. He never considered, what happens if they're both too strong for us? He had a courageous spirit. God likes that. When you're not ashamed. Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me and my words, I'll be ashamed of you. The Lord wants you to be courageous. He, I'll tell you something else why God liked David. Because David liked God. God liked David and, and David liked God. I love him, but I also like him. I like for the Lord to be around. I want his presence. I want his presence wherever I go. 
Whenever I go to preach, I always expect to see somebody get saved. I want to try to do my best to see somebody get saved. And I'm praying, God, save somebody. Encourage the saints. I want to see the saints. I, I don't come to preach revivals and places. I don't go there to hurt nobody. I don't want to see nobody. That was my old life. I don't want to hurt nobody. I want to see everybody encouraged. I want to see people courageous for the Lord, not ashamed. I want to see people that like God, and God likes them. Man, what a thing. Why God like David? David said, God like me. That wasn't bragging. That was the truth. God liked me. God liked David because of David liked God. And I'll tell you something else about David. David didn't do anything half-heartedly. God liked David because it wasn't, it wasn't his heart was in it. You know what I find in Christianity today? People are serving God, but there's no heart in it. It's just, I mean, I told you, I listened to Jack Howells on duty. I want to do my duty but I want to do it with all my heart. Amen. And there's no heart in people today. When it comes to church, they don't worship God from their heart. When the Bible says, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and out of your heart is the issues of life. And the Bible talks about, you know, our heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Man, if you can give your heart to him and say, Lord, you've got my heart. And I want to love you. I want you to serve you. And I want my heart to be always. You said, you need to ask God that? I always got, Lord, please, get my heart. Get my wife's heart. Put the fear of God in us. Get my children. Get my grandchildren. Get the church. Get your children. God wants your heart. He didn't do anything half-heartedly. He didn't come to church and sit there and go, oh, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a full taste Amen. of glory deep. <laughs> of the glory deep. You, I go to church, man, you see people back there messing with their phones. And they're messing on Facebook while service is going on. It used to be in the 70s, everybody passing notes, kids. Now everybody's messing with their phones, they're messing with this, mess. it ain't no real worship. Everything's half-hearted. People don't know how to worship God. Amen. So they ride down the road and they listen to country music and they... Mm, 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 mm. That's why Christian rock is so big. I mean, because they say, well, I'm going to listen to Christian rock. It's not wrong. It's, it's gospel. I went to a church a couple weeks ago. And I said, man, it was a great big church. They, they said they paid $9 million. And, uh, and, it was, man, it was, and I wasn't preaching there. But it was huge. And, the, and uh, they were having a funeral there of a friend of mine. And they had the pulpit here. And right back here, it had lights. They had lights. They had a full set of drums right here. And the lights were on it. So I went to a church where they had, they had plexiglass around the drums. And I said, well, you put the plexiglass around. They said, well, the drums take over the whole service. So we don't want him to lose his enthusiasm. So we just, we just put the plexiglass so we can hear ourselves think. And I thought, man, can you see that pastor going like this? Getting up here, all right, folks, open your, open your songbook to 356. Hit it, baby! God have mercy. You know we're living in the late I seeing period? The Bible says in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, it says God's outside. He's not in church anymore. Why? They run him out. He run him out. God didn't, David didn't do anything half-heartedly. When he brought the ark in, his wife mocked him. She mocked him. And the Bible says this, M Michelle, she had no children from then on. She mocked the king. She had no children. David said it was before the Lord, and what he was doing, he was dancing before the Lord. 2 Samuel 6. And that dancing wasn't, he was out there stripping off his clothes and doing the bump and, and the grind and all that stuff. He was out there shouting. Leaping, praising God. David didn't do anything half-heartedly. It was with all his heart. I, it bothers me at times. I've had, I, folks, let me tell you something. I've been preaching at our church or at other church. I've been preaching and I've preached half-heartedly. I've gone in my office. And as soon as I went in my office, I felt, I shut the door, locked the door, got on my knees and cried and said, God, I'm sorry. My heart wasn't in it. Forgive me, Lord, I'll do better. 
Because sometimes I got up and I just preached a message. No heart. I want to be, man, I want to have my heart in it. I want, man, I want people to know that I, I believe what I believe with all my heart. David didn't do anything half-heartedly. You come to church, I hope you don't come half-heartedly. I know you work in a job. Folks, I've done the same thing. I pastored a church. I pastored a church and worked a job and left at 4 in the morning, 4.30 in the morning, 5 o'clock, and going to work over uh, 185, 87 miles away and coming back, going on visitation and going to the hospitals and then preaching and then, you know, all kinds. I did the same thing. I, I still work every day. I'm not, I'm not, I'm a full-time pastor, but I still work. I do think your pastor works around here. Evident he's worked around here. And we still work. I work at the church. I work on buses. I work whatever I can. I don't want to do anything half-hearted. And you get this idea of once I become the pastor, you know, I'm the big cheese and I'm the big chief and I, you're the Indians and I, I sit there and tell you what. No, that ain't the way it is. Amen. That ain't the way we were trained. Amen. We were trained. Bez was, tra- he was trained, to, man, to get involved and do whatever it is with all your heart. Amen. His heart's in this building. His heart's in this church. His heart's in your life. My heart's in my family's life, in my, in my children's life, in my church's life, just like he is here. And we're not, we're not hirelings. We do it with all our heart. David didn't do anything half-heartedly. I'll tell you this last thing. Why God liked David, and this is the main one. This is the main one why God liked David. Because David was a good repenter. And when it came to sin, when David sinned with Bathsheba, when the prophet came in and said, you're the man, and pointed out his sin, David, David could have had him killed. David could have said, take his head off. And when, they, when they, they came in and gave him a scenario, he said there was a man that came and he, had, he only had one ewe lamb. And there was a man that had many. And he took that man's ewe lamb and slowed it. And David got so mad that he pronounced judgment on himself. He said that man's going to die and he's going to pay fourfold. Because that's the law. David pronounced judgment on himself. And then Nathan said, you're the man. He said, but God's going to let you live, but it's going to cost you four children. David repented before God. He got, he got right. God liked David because David was a good repenter. God likes it when you repent. Repent is Bible. It's changing your mind. The Bible says God repented. Did God have to get saved, get right? No. God changed his mind and say what it is. When you repent and say, God, I'm wrong and you're right. Lord, I've been wrong and you've been right. And you say, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Why God liked David? Because David was content with who he was. God was pleased with David. David was content with what God thought. David had a courageous spirit. And David liked God. And David didn't do anything half-heartedly. David was a good repenter. When was the last time you repented over something? When was the last time you told God, I'm sorry? I've, I've been, me and my wife, we've had arguments. I've had to tell God I was sorry and I had to tell her I was sorry. And usually, you know what happens? When you tell somebody you're sorry, usually they say, well, no. It was my fault. Now, God doesn't have to do that because God's right. He's always right. And when you tell God, say, I'm Lord, I'm sorry, forgive me. I'm sorry. You know what the Lord does? He doesn't hold it over your head. And when he gets mad at you, he doesn't bring it up again. You know what the Bible says about David? You know what I liked about God? When David messed up with Bathsheba and and it's written down in uh, Samuel, but God doesn't bring it back up in Chronicles. He doesn't bring it back up. When you repent, God says, okay, I forgive you. He forgives. I'm telling you so, something. God liked David because David was a good repenter. If you got something in your life, you say, God doesn't like. I've said something, I've done something. I, I, I tell you, folks, a lot of times I repent ten times a day. 
I say, God, I shouldn't, have, I shouldn't have thought that. God, forgive me. God, I'm sorry about that. See, 10 times a day, yeah, sometimes it's wicked thoughts. You know, they say 10,000 thoughts go through your mind every day. 10,000. And if you're watching something, listening to something, and there's more thoughts go through your mind. Why God like David? Because he was a good repenter. When's the last time you've repented? Ask God to forgive you about something. If you haven't, boy, I'll tell you what. You need to. Father, thank you again tonight, God, for your mercy. Thank you for being so good to us. Oh, my Father, I thank you that that verse is in the Bible where David said, God, like me. And Lord, I pray, God, you would like what we do, Father, for your glory. And God, that you would like our, Father, the way we live. You would like our friends. You would like our loved ones. And God, you would like everything to that we have, we raise our children. And Lord, I pray that you would like uh, the places we go and the things we do. And God, if, they, if you don't, I pray you show us, Lord. Help us get the thing right. And Lord, you're always right. And my Father, I, I love you, and I, I'm concerned about what you think. And I want to be what you want me to be. I want to be that man for your glory, for your honor. And my, David was a man, and he was your man, and he loved you, and he loved you with all his heart. And my Father, I pray, God, help us to have that same spirit, that courageous spirit that David had for your glory and honor.